I want to give you my quick thoughts on this Series 7 Anchor 737 power bank, which is quite new. I think it was released just over a week ago. Uh, it's one of their new GAN Prime uh, technology, which you know allows you to deliver up to 140 watts in and out uh, PD 3.1. Now I bought this with my own money, so I can give you an honest review on its pros and few cons, and who this is really for. After all, it is a quite an expensive device for the amount of uh, energy it gives you, but so I wanted to do a few quick tests on it to find out actually if it does deliver that amount of power in a short period of time. And unfortunately, I do have a, a fast charger that gives me uh, 90 and another one gives me 120 watts, but I didn't have any device that actually can draw that much power. In fact, uh, I would go as far as my power banks, some of the power banks I have that uh, basically take in up to 60 watts. And it more than delivered the 60 watts, as you can see from the videos in a very short period of time. My concern is what was the actual capacity of this battery as they're claiming it's 86.4 watts. And from all the tests I've done, I've done several of you, I actually was only able to draw about 75 watt hours, which is, you know, a little bit short of the 86.4 watts hour. But I assume that's because they left a little bit uh, on the top and the bottom, probably maybe 5, 6, 10% just to keep the battery safe because you never want to really uh, overcharge or undercharge a life battery because they, the lithium batteries, because they actually die faster when you do so. But uh, the amount of power you're going to be able to draw with it uh, is approximately 75 watts, actually. So you're going to see that from the test over here. And actually, it took uh, quite a short time to empty, drawing about 60 watts for about an hour and 14 minutes. So let's start with the pros. It does have an amazing display. Um, it shows you a lot more details than you need. I mean, I used a, a third party tool here, which allows me to be able to see the voltage and the current and the watts and the time it takes and so on. And I can put the description, uh, the link for this uh, device in the description below. So if you're interested in buying that alone, but the spark bag actually can give you details on specific port, each port and how much you're drawing or how long it's going to take to discharge based on the, how much power you're pulling out and you can also see uh, the same uh, also when you're charging it and how long it takes to fully charge so that's quite useful um, I mean the super quick charging is any device at maximum power I mean honestly I don't have anything that draws 140 watts so it doesn't matter how big your laptop is you're gonna actually be able to uh, charge with it having that said you only have have, have about 75 watts give or take, use, usable amount, but you'll be able to charge at literally full power of any device that you possibly could have at full power up to 75 watts, whatever that percentage may be for your, uh, say, battery or power bank or laptop and so on. In my case here, uh, I did a test on a power bank that I have, which is approximately 205 watts. So I did charge about 33% of it. Now, we're going to get to the cons very soon, but... Uh, just want to finish up on the features here. So it has trickle draw, which, you know, for slow pulling devices, some of the other power banks, you know, if you have a very slow, like AirPod or so on, very slow device that pulled very little power, the power bank just shuts off because it assumes you're actually not pulling anything. This one actually you can double tap and it goes into that mode. Um, otherwise it's, you know, it's quite portable. It's not heavy, you know, it can easily fit uh, in your luggage, in your bag, in your backpack and so on. It doesn't take that much space. And uh, there is no heat, any noticeable heat on it, uh, unlike other devices. Now, here's the cons. Uh, if you go for the amount of watts you're pulling out, to the p type of technology, to the size, uh, I mean, alternatively, I can argue that you can get, you know, a LifePo 4, which, you know, gives you 2,000 cycles, uh, 200 watts for about 100 bucks here. It's actually discounted recently. And you can see that in the description below if you're interested in that link. So you could get three times the amount for $50 cheaper, but you're actually grabbing something quite big. And mind you, that uh, GoLabs one, as an example, it has the AC inverter. Um, there's an adapter you can connect for a 9-volt battery for you know an external fridge. And I actually did a review on that as well. So f for what's best on your for your buck, I would go with that. Having that said, you can't exactly walk around with it everywhere you go. You need something portable, and that's where the, the thing shines up. So why did I get it? Uh, I got it because I have a Steam Deck, and my Steam Deck is, let's say, 40 watt or uh, 5.3 amp hours. 
this one more than charges it and a bit actually it charges it almost one and a half times so this would be quite useful for me because I'm never gonna carry this big uh, charging station with me and this thing would be slightly bigger than a power adapter that I'll have to carry with me so it's convenient I can oh charge my uh, steam deck more than one and a half times almost two times uh, and play and it's convenient it's unfortunately a little bit more expensive than I would have liked but that's really the the pros that I would say uh, that's worth buying it because all the alternative power banks that are quite cheaper I would say around 40 to 50 dollars do not deliver that much they deliver about 20 watts uh, 20 watt hour so it's quite slow and it will never be able to keep up as the steam deck would draw about say 34 to 40 watts so that's the main uh, main reason you would buy something like that give or take anyways if you have any questions uh, throw them below and i'm more than happy to answer them for you